I'm very excited to be here with Dr. Jose Baselga. He is Associate Director and Chief of Hematology Oncology at Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center. Dr. Baselga is also the Bruce A. Chabner Chair in Hematology Oncology. His talk is Combinatorial Approaches to Prevent Adoptive Responses to Targeted Therapeutics in Breast Cancer. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. What is the risk of adoptive responses in relation to targeted therapies in general and for what you're working on in particular? Right. So what we have learned is that one of the important things about oncogene addiction is that not only the cancer cells are addicted to an oncogene, but the, basically they suppress any other signaling, uh, either of upstream or parallel pathways. So what we are studying is that some of these therapies against oncogenes are not as effective as, as, effective as we thought they would be. And what we are discovering is that uh, the reason for that may be that by blocking the oncogene, uh, pathway, you are reactivating additional compensatory pathways that might rescue from the effects of the, of the given therapy. So uh, many of the therapies that we are studying in patients that are not uh, efficient or efficacious may be because we are activating these pathways. Um, that is profound uh, and it, it means that if we had a way to identify which are these pathways on every single case, maybe we could target them and then we would achieve an anti-tumor effect and that's exactly what we are doing and the beauty of the whole uh, proposal is that we are beginning to see uh, situations in the clinic, examples, uh, where this approach seems to be working. What are the challenges you're finding with combinatorial approaches and what are some of the solutions? Right, so the biggest challenge that we find with the combinatorial approaches is to identify which are the pathways that are being activated on every single case. And in every tumor type, those pathways are gonna be different. So we need to interrogate uh, in the lab and then in the clinic, we need to interrogate um, which are these pathways. And that's the hard part. Once we do that, then what comes after that is easier because then you just design a combination approach that is appropriate. So I can give you a couple of examples, for example. We um, did work with uh, mTOR inhibitors and we saw that responses were not very good. So they were activity, but was not striking. We identified that signaling via the estrogen receptor uh, was a pathway of, uh, of reactivation or a pathway of survival, if you wish. So then the next thing was a logical one. We continued to suppress ER with an anodic inhibitor and the mTOR with an mTOR inhibitor. And this was the basis for our Polero 2 study that showed this amazing improvement in progression fee survival. So that's one example. Other things that we've seen has been also with mTOR inhibitors and IG1 receptor uh, pathway activation. And the combination also appears to be very promising. PI3 kinase inhibitors and HER3 inhibitors, same story. BRAF and MEK inhibitors. So it's going to be uh, a theme uh, that uh, is going to be quite, quite important. And the fact that we see in these clinical examples already is telling us that this is going to be a fruitful approach. And what are the next steps in your work? So in our work, uh, we are doing now a lot of work with, so we have been working for a number of years in mTOR inhibitors. So now we like to go up on the pathway and we are beginning to work on PI3 kinase inhibitors and specifically we are working, and it's very exciting, on PI3 kinase alpha inhibitors in tumors that harbor PI3 kinase mutations. We're going to be presenting these at the next AACR meeting. Um, these are trials in which we enroll patients that harbor these mutations and we see not only whether they respond to therapy but also what are the pathways that are being turned on. Um, so that's, that's what keeps us excited. Well, I can't wait to talk to you about that later on. Thank you so much. Thank you.